Hey guys, today we're testing the NVIDIA Quadro FX1300. FX series video cards are known for their retro compatibility, excellent DartX7 performance, compatibility with palleted textures and also table fog. This card is particularly interesting because it has a PCI Express interface. This means we can bring retro compatibility to more modern systems with PCI Express. However, because this video card is from the Quadro range, there might be compatibility issues with drivers. This video card is a donation from BART, thank you very much. It only took me around two years to get around to actually playing with it. He made it really easy. The video card is modified, so he installed some coolers for the VRM chips. The BIOS is also modified. We have a nice overclock with the core running at 400 megahertz and the RAM running at 750. He also deleted the GPU so uh, to improve the cooling and he uh, bundled it with a aftermarket cooler which I've installed after applying some thermal paste. There are two DVI ports, one and two, as well as a TV port and both DVI ports carry VGA. We start testing with Windows XP. This is the test platform. We have a Plex HD X79 motherboard. So the processor is from the Ivy Bridge generation. It's a 1620 Xeon V2 running at 3.7 gigahertz. I went into the BIOS. We are only using two cores and I've disabled hyper threading. I downgraded the RAM, I had 32 gigabytes of memory, now we have 16 gigabytes in quad channel configuration DDR3 1866. I tried using a Kingston NVMe M.2 SSD, but in this system it doesn't get picked up uh, in the Windows XP installation, so we're using a SATA SSD, the Western Digital Green, with 240 gigabytes. I partitioned and formatted this on a Windows 10 machine to make sure the partitions are aligned. And for sound, we're using the Sound Blaster X5 Titanium for PCI Express. I'm using Win Setup from USB to install Windows XP from a USB drive. The SATA controller is set to AHCI, so everything went smoothly. And after Windows XP has installed, we're using the Snappy Driver Installer Origin. This is a really cool program. It uh, probes for the devices and then automatically installs all the drivers. Unfortunately, I hit a roadblock. It was trying to install the NVIDIA driver and then we get the blinking cursor of doom. I rebooted the machine and then tried to manually install the NVIDIA driver. We have version uh, 169.96 from 2008, but the same issue persists. It seems this video card does not like this main board for some reason. So that's always very frustrating. You already spent quite a bit of time setting everything up and then if something doesn't work, you have nothing to show for, but we have to move on. And I had quite a few options as to what system to use next, but I chose to go with this one. MSI, this is a AM2 Plus platform. The machine booted just fine. I ran into two little issues. Firstly, the RAM showed up as being single channel, despite following the instructions in the manual. And also when trying to load the AHCI SATA driver, uh, the software gave us three options. I wasn't sure which, to, which one to go for. But at this point, I just wanted to be up and running Quickly, so I ignored the single channel memory and I just went with the IDE mode. And yeah, we have success. This time the Windows uh, XP installation and the video driver worked just fine. Uh, here you can see the driver. I'm setting the resolution to full HD and we're having a nice and clear image. I'm using a separate SSD for this machine. It's the Team Group one terabyte SSD. I do that because just in case I want to go back to the other platform, I don't want to use the same SSD and then have to reinstall everything again. Now that I know that the video drivers are working, I spend a little bit more time investigating the issues. It turned out I mismatched the RAM. I had a two gigabyte and the one gigabyte memory module. That's why uh, it wasn't running a dual channel configuration. They are from the same brand. It was just an oversight. And also with the AHCI driver, I picked the second option. 
it is a chipset from the 700 AMD series and then everything was up and running. Let's run some benchmarks just to get an idea what this card can do. In 3 Mark 2001 SE, we're getting 16,372. In 03, we're getting 5,658. And in 05, we're getting 1,060. So we can already see the performance is quite limited when it comes to DirectX 9 performance. Let's test a few games. This is Far Cry running at 1600 by 1200 with 16x and isotropic filtering. And uh, here are some graphs. 15.1 FPS is we're getting at the 1600 by 1200 resolution, but even at 640 by 480, we're not hitting 60 FPS. So this video card is not something uh, I would recommend for playing more modern Windows XP retro games. Nvidia does really well with OpenGL, but in Doom 3, we're seeing a similar picture. This is the Doom 3 benchmark running at 1600 by 1200 we're getting. 13.5 FPS and let's have a look at the resolution scaling. 640 by 480 we're getting 43.9 FPS. So with this video card also Doom 3 not that enjoyable. But what about retro compatibility? Here we have Final Fantasy 7 and unfortunately it tells us that palleted textures are not supported which is yeah that's quite disappointing. Moving on to Table Fog, here we have Thief 2. Uh, you have to go into the options and enable Fog. And yep, Table Fog seems to be working fine in this game. And what about temperatures? Here we have Far Cry running in a window, I believe. It's running at 800 by 600. And GPU said, reading us the sensors. And yeah, around 48, 49 degrees was the highest I saw for the GPU temperature. And that's pretty good. So the deleting and the aftermarket cooler definitely does a good job. And now it's time to test Windows 98. I'm staying with the same M2 platform, but we have to change a few components. Now there are patches to use more RAM, but I like to keep things out of the box. I found a team group DDR2 512 megabyte RAM stick, so that's perfect for this project. I also downsized the SSD. This is a SanDisk with 32 gigabytes of RAM, perfect for Windows 98. Go into the BIOS, set it to IDE mode, and we need a USB floppy drive. This is the USB external version of the GoTek USB floppy emulator. We need this to boot the Windows 98 boot disk, partition format, and make the hard drive bootable. And then I connect the SSD to a modern Windows computer and copy over the Windows installation files, the drivers, the games, the benchmarks, all that stuff. So far, so good. Windows installed just fine. Here we have the desktop. The device manager doesn't look very good. Uh, a lot of errors. This is to be expected when you're using a PCI Express mainboard in Windows 98. We've done uh, projects like that in the past using ATI Radeon cards and we had success. Unfortunately, after trying two drivers, we have version 61.76 and 66.94. Both of these drivers mention the Quadro FX 1300 in the uh, documentation, but firstly, both installers don't work, but that doesn't mean uh, you can't load the drivers. So I'm going through the device manager and manually installing the drivers. Unfortunately, um, after a reboot, we get a black screen, the driver just doesn't seem to want to load. I tried safe mode and I tried a few times, but it just wouldn't work. So guys, what is my take on the NVIDIA Quadro FX 1300? I faced quite a few issues and it doesn't mean that you will do the same. Um, that's just sometimes how things go with retro hardware. But I believe the PCI Express Quadro FX 1300 might be one of the trickier cards to get going. Under Windows XP, it wouldn't work with my X79 platform, which is a shame. I never had such an issue before. And also we found that in Final Fantasy VII, it didn't support palletized textures, which is one of the highlights of the FX range of video cards. Under Windows 98, I also had issues with getting the driver to work. Again, it doesn't mean there is uh, no possibility. My time is limited, so at some point when I can't get it to work, I have to move on. If you have experience with this video card and you found a good combination of hardware and driver versions, 
Please share your experiences down below. If you find a topic of retro compatibility with palleted textures and table fog interesting, I've got a video for you to check out. It's from another YouTube channel, Ancient Electronics. And another video of mine, the PCI GeForce FX 5500. This might work better if you want to build a machine with modern parts, but still be retro compatible. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you soon with another one.